Hey, what up all my tooth doctors and doctresses. Welcome to another video at the Tooth Factory. Today's lecture is gonna be on dental caries and it's an update from the American Dental Association's caries classification system. So let's go and talk about why is there a need for a new classification? Well, first of all, we know GV Black's classification, right? The class one to six. Well, it has its own limitations. It's associated with, well, cavitated lesions only. It's got failure to identify early caries lesion. It can only identify caries once it's been cavitated. And then there's the undermining of the preventative measures. Basically, in order to treat GV Black's classification, we have to have a definitive treatment, like a restorative measure, rather than a preventative measure, such as sealants. So to overcome these limitations, the American Dental Association came up with the classification. Before we go ahead, let's talk about a few important terminologies that are used quite often in this classification. First of all, the non-cavitated lesion. Non-cavitated lesions are basically imbalances in the demineralization and remineralization process. See, we know that this balance keeps our tooth healthy, but if there's more demineralization, it can lead to caries. It initiates at a critical pH of 5.5, that's a very important point for the exams, and identified by change in color, glossiness, and surface texture. So something like this. When there's a change in color and texture, for example, it's more white, it's got more uh, glossier appearance for the tooth and more matte appearance for the white spot. And also when there is its change in structural integrity, a little bit of roughness is come about, all of that is non-cavitated lesions. Then what about cavitated lesions? Well, we got surface integrity is compromised. It's got loss of irreversible loss of enamel. There's indication of progressive dental caries and disease, which means the caries is active and it's going ahead. There could be a micro or a macro cavitation. So for example, this is a macro cavitation that you can see in the red circle here that the enamel is completely lost and the dentin is being exposed, which is cavitated lesions. Next set of terminologies, we have surgical treatment. When we're talking about surgical treatment in caries classification, we're talking about a minimally invasive and conservative restorative procedure. It is aimed at replacement of lost heart tissue of the tooth, such as enamel and dentin, or cementum for that matter. And it's accompanied with behavioral modification approach, basically in order to allow them to treat better at home by better brushing techniques, flossing, and oral health approaches. Also, it's attributed to cavitated lesions only. When, when could you do surgical treatment? When you're doing a restorative procedure of a cavitated lesion. For example, this one. We know it's surgical because we took some time to prepare this cavity and fill it with silver amalgam. Next is non-surgical treatment. Well, it's the sealants or the preventative measures to halt the caries progress or prevent it from happening in the first place. Behavioral modifications will aid the remineralization and it's attributed to non-cavitated lesions, such as this one. We see the change in color, glossiness and texture, and then we seal it. From the exterior environment, it's a barrier that prevents the caries progress and helps us resolve it. So let's move on to the concept of spectrum. This is a very important diagram to understand the caries classification. It begins with increasing mineral loss leading to cavitation of the surface. In that time, there are four categories this classification is divided into. We got sound surface, healthy tooth, initial mineral loss, which is an indication of demineralization, but not cavitation. Here we have moderate mineral loss and now we have enamel cavitation. You know those micro cavitations we were talking about? Leading to advanced mineral loss, which is deep, open, exposed dentin and cavitation. So let's take a look at each. Sound is healthy tooth, no clinical detectable caries and no treatment needed. Initial mineral loss involves enamel, cementum and outer dentin only. 
it's basically a net mineral loss. In the process, it, demineralization wins against remineralization. It is, however, reversible with the process of remineralization. Then we have moderate mineral loss. This is where cavitation with dentin shadowing, basically the yellowness, the grayness underneath the enamel is now seen. Radiographic diagnosis is useful, lets us know the location and the extent, and the color texture change will indicate the severity. In advanced mineral loss, the decayed, fully exposed lesion with irreversible loss of tooth structure, 100% histologic damage of dentin. And now we have collapsed tooth structure with progressive dentin damage and further caries progress. So this spectrum is very important to understand. The next slide. Here's a picture of sound dentin, non-cavitated tooth structure and cavitated tooth structure. Here is the game changer. This is the main classification that we need to talk about. So to do so, I will pull up my pen now. Okay, so the American Dental Association's caries classification. First of all, the first category is sound. Second, initial. Third, moderate and advanced is the last one. So we already talked about this in the last slide. It is divided into clinical presentation, other labels, we'll look into that a little bit, infected dentin, appearance of occlusal surfaces. So basically what the occlusal surfaces look like, they have their own codes, accessible smooth surface and including cervical root surfaces, and then radiographic representation. So you'd notice that eventually right in the middle of this, there are several areas with all these different codes all the way through. Even in the radiographic area, we got E1, RA1, and so on. So let's talk about that in a little bit of a depth. First of all, a sound tooth structure is not clinically detectable lesion. We got dental heart tissue appears normal in color and translucency and gloss. So we got that. Okay. Then we have no surface change or adequately restored tooth, which means a tooth that was previously used in caries and is now restored. Infected dentin, of course, it's not present at all. We got appearance of occlusal surfaces, pits and fissures. There's code zero. That's what it's called, code zero. Accessible smooth surfaces, including cervical and root surface. It's completely accessibly and visibly smooth, glossy, and uniform, homogeneous. Radiographically, we have E0 and R0. We can see that their tooth structure is still very, very well designed and there is no radiolucency. Coming to the initial one, the earliest clinical detectable lesion compatible with mild demineralization. Lesion is limited to enamel, or to shallow demineralization of cementum and dentin. This means that enamel, cementum, and the first layer of dentin is involved. The mildest form are detectable only after drying. When established in active lesions, may be white or brown, and enamel has lost its normal gloss. So these are non-cavitated lesions, therefore known as visually non-cavitated. Infected dentin is really unlikely because we're still in the initial phase. And in the appearance, we have code one and code two. You can now here appreciate that there is slight change in color and slight change in texture and integrity. The smooth surfaces and the cervical surfaces are very different from healthy enamel. See, healthy enamel here is glossy, homogeneous. Here there's inflamed tissue in the gingiva region and you could see the change in the white spot here. Radiographically, the initial phase is divided into E1, E2, D1. So enamel one, enamel two, and dentin one. Radiolucency may extend to the dentin enamel junction or the outer third of dentin. Note that the radiographs are reliable for mild occlusal lesions, are not reliable, I apologize, are not reliable for mild occlusal lesions. Now, moving on to the moderate. We know that the 
visible signs of enamel breakdown, basically a cavitation is seen and the dentin is moderately demineralized. The established and early cavitated lesion is now seen with shallow cavitations, also known as micro cavitation. And that's what code three and code four are about. Here's the sign of code three where the sealed lesions are now showing the changes around the lesion and code four is visibly visibly cavitated shallow cavitation micro cavitation these are moderate and from the front at these smooth surfaces we have severe changes in color consistency of the tooth structure and it's being compromised by cavitation here radiographically speaking it's now labeled d2 or rb4 this is where radiolucency will extend into the middle third of the dentin. Here we can see the typical pyramidal pattern where enamel caries goes to DEJ, spreads across DEJ, and then makes its way towards pulp. But now it's on the inner one third, middle one third, and inner one third region. And advanced is specifically the fully cavitated, exposed, and dentin is completely exposed. The dentin lesion is deeply severely demineralized. The spread, disseminated, and late cavitated and deep cavitation where there is infected dentin definitely present, code 5 and code 6. This is a very narrow but deep lesion. This is a very wide and late cavitation. From the front smooth surface, we have exposed dentin exposed dentin with some arrested caries here and active caries here. Radiographically, now it's called D3 or RC5. Radiolucency extends into the inner, inner one third of dentin and it is now so close to the pulp that dental caries now need to be treated restoratively using surgical measures only. So that was the second format. All right, I've included this slide here for the purpose of knowledge that we need to understand certain characteristics of active and inactive caries lesion. A little bit of a revision from dentistry on that. See, the caries lesion activity assessment descriptions are likely to be inactive or arrested when the lesion is not in a plaque stagnation area where there's not much biofilm present, where there is not thick or sticky plaque around it. If the surface is shiny, the color is brown or black, there is caries. However, it could be inactive or arrested itself. Tactile feeling, we have smooth or hard enamel, hard dentin. Hard means it's been either remineralized, obviously not to the point where it's natural, but the caries progression has stopped. And no inflammation, no bleeding on probing is present near the gingiva. That is also considered. Now, in terms of active caries, we have lesion in a plaque stagnation area, such as pit, fissure, and a proximal gingiva on each side, mesial or distal. The plaque is either thick or sticky. That means the caries is potentially active. The surface appearance could be matte, opaque, loss of luster. Basically, it's not glossy anymore. And it could be white or yellow, showing the dentin shadow. Tactile feeling is rough enamel, soft dentin, basically our previous point of structural integrity loss, and then inflammation and bleeding is present, showing that the gingiva is also affected. Perfect. Moving on to the next slide. This is the resource for today's lecture. We picked it up from the Journal of American Dental Association from the article released in 2015, the American Dental Association Caries Classification System for Clinical Practice, that now majority of the clinics in North America are beginning to use this, and so is the NDEB and INBDE exams. It's from the JADA. The link for this article is in the description box below, so feel free to go ahead and read it. Uh, however, this lecture was constructed to summarize that entire format. So thank you so much for watching the Tooth Factory Lecture and stay tuned for more.